uh, Roland, let's talk about something else that also has to do with children. Yes, and we know that as always, um, childbirth is a gift from God. We're talking autism this morning. And for many families in Ghana, it becomes a burden, if not a curse. Uh, and when the parents of these children with autism are themselves challenged in understanding what the situation is, they blame God for giving them an autistic child mm, and there's nothing more painful than being let's say kicked when you're down in life yet for children with autism they are mocked oftentimes abandoned kicked and also deserted in their lowest estates by their neighbors well friends it could be teachers and even their parents who are supposed to know better in altruism mm. well richard kujunia converses Autism Compassion Africa at Olaya State in Cape Coast, the central regional capital, to learn how autistic children are being helped to realize their full potential. It's a Monday morning, and numerous activities for children with autism have started here at the Autism Compassion Africa at Olaya State in Cape Coast. The autism awareness is gradually evolving in Ghana and people are beginning to realize and understand that children born with autism are not spiritual cases from lesser gods, neither are they useless, but if they are helped, they can achieve their full potentials. If they are abandoned as shrines by their parents like they used to happen, their lives become a life without dreams, a life of droughts that prays for rain that never comes. We've got Pascal here. This morning, Pascal has been engaging in a lot of activities. Uh, he's been writing uh, one, two, three, four, five, and he's been repeating them. And here he's written Methodist Church Jesus. So I asked him um, what his name was, and he wrote this for me, Pascal. What's your name? Pascal. Uh, Pascal is an awesome kid. He joined us about maybe three or four weeks ago. And um, he is 18, so he's quite a bit older. But we are just getting ready to have a meeting with his family to set the goals for the coming year. So as you notice, Pascal is a sweet, gentle guy. Um, he can communicate some, where autism affects communication. But we want to work on increasing his um, back and forth communication communication and helping him be able to be clear so that people can understand what he's trying to um, let them know. Um, so we will set goals for him, including the communication I mentioned, social skills, uh, self-help skills. He's really great. He can, you know, wash his hands. You just saw him do it. Um, as they get older, we also work to teach vocational skills so that maybe eventually he could also have um, a job himself. So right now, like I said, we just finished up assessments with him and are getting ready to set the goals for the coming year. This is Michelle. Her gentle smile is infectious. She is that beautiful with autism and daring to change the narrative about people with autism. This is one of her preferences. Her teacher is doing a very good job on her. Um, she's doing great. She, we started with her goals just January and she's mastered most of them so far. She's mastered requests for attention as you just saw. When she wants something, she instead of touching you in the face or somewhere else, she just taps you. And she's mastered asking for more. So if she wants more of something, we teach her to sign for more like this. Although she doesn't sign like this, she does this. But she knows that when she signs for more, she gets what's... And then she's mastered. She is um, almost done mastering with her. Um, hand skills, so she manipulates this with Play Doh. The interventions in communication for autism include picture exchange communication and sign language for those who are non verbal and also help those who cannot verbally express themselves properly. There are also sensory imbalances which make them candidates for a combination of visual, spatial, and auditory modes of instruction and accommodations to facilitate functioning and inclusion. Whitney Hamel has over nine years of experience directly working in the field of autism. She loves people with autism and is determined to change the narrative. 
She is the boss here at Autism Compassion Africa. Here, students are assessed, and then we create goals for them to learn for the year ahead in all areas of development, not just academics, but it's very individualized and unique to the student. With it being one student to one teacher, um, we can only take so many students at a time because it's expensive and we can't pass that expense on to the parents. So we do a lot of fundraising in the US, hope to do soon in Ghana, and then I do consulting on the side. Um, so slowly over time, we've had more students coming. Those that have been here from the beginning have started their individualized education plans and are making uh, great progress. As, as you noted, Michelle has already mastered a few of her programs and had a parent meeting on Friday and mom was very happy. And um, so we're just continuing to push forward. We have uh, eight, our eighth student starts later this week. Whitney started with two students here at Ola where her school is striving to put smiles on the faces of the children. Her outfit runs an individualized model that makes it possible for one teacher to handle one student, a situation that is completely absent from many other schools that nurture people with autism. So we really want to help change the narrative of autism in the country. It's not a word that many people know, um, but what does happen to children with special needs, unfortunately, is they might be hidden away or they might be um, the most extreme is termination of life. And we really want to get the awareness campaign. She's out. pushing for inclusion for where children with autism can learn with their peers in other public schools. Acceptance of who they are is what she dreams and yearns for. So in, in places that I've worked in the past, um, for instance, when I spent time working in Abu Dhabi, we had students that started in a center like this, and then eventually we integrated them into the public school with support. So um, you, either you need more teachers in the classroom or you need someone who is what we consider like a shadow teacher that's there to modify the curriculum to help the student participate with their peers. In Ghana and many parts of Africa, diseases whose root causes cannot be traced medically are viewed as a form of a curse and so many children in mainstream schools who have autism but cannot express themselves suffer discrimination and teasing from their peers and teachers. Richard Kwejonyakon, Joy News, Ula Estate, Cape Coast. And these categories of children always fall within the demographics of being vulnerable.